Thank you, Mr. Keating. I now recognize Mr. Lawler from New York for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, last week, some of my colleagues and I sent a letter to President Biden urging that the administration prioritize discussion on Ukraine's ascension to NATO at the Vilnius summit. Uh, at the very least, we must establish a clear and achievable pathway to membership accompanied by concrete security commitments, of course. Uh, is the administration planning to put forward this discussion at the summit? So I can speak to certainly uh, your comment about um, a clear path. That is a, a major focus of the summit, and we are working diligently to send that clear message of support uh, for Ukraine um, at Vilnius. Well, yet just this weekend, the president said that his administration wouldn't, quote, make it easy, end quote, for Ukraine to join NATO. So is it going to be a clear path or is it going to be uh, difficult? Uh, I don't think there's any um, contradiction there. The NATO um, membership process is a rigorous process. It's a standards-based process. Um, and to get through it successfully, uh, right. Ukraine so if will it's have stand to if it's standard, why do why even have the comment that we're not going to make it easy? What is it that we're concerned about? Uh, because every applicant, including Ukraine, has to make uh, reforms to meet the um, the criteria for membership. And so, uh, what we're focused on in this um, summit is really providing Ukraine the support that it needs to make those reforms so it can be successful in the in the um, um, membership process. Is the goal of the administration ultimately to have them part of NATO? So we have said that we stand by what was said in um, in um, in Bucharest that Ukraine will become a member of the alliance. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, with respect to Moldova, uh, Moldova obviously is in the process of uh, reforming uh, its government. Uh, President Sandu has taken on corruption uh, in concert with uh, the United States and the EU, uh, putting sanctions in place. Um, they are obviously seeking EU membership um, and in that process. Are, is there any talk with respect to Moldova uh, being part of NATO and, and obviously rigorous process understood, but is there any talk with respect to uh, Moldova and what NATO uh, can and should do uh, to help with security? Um, perhaps, uh, Congressman, I can first address it from a bilateral perspective, because right now the government of Moldova is really focusing on EU membership, and they aren't emphasizing NATO membership. So we actually have ramped up significantly our engagement with Moldova to support them in this critical time. And from a Defense Department perspective, we've significantly expanded uh, security assistance and training and other forms of uh, engagement and support. And it really is intended to strengthen their ability to defend themselves um, and have a deterrent effect um, and build towards what they see as an immediate EU goal. Um, but if you want to comment on NATO. I just wanted to add that uh, Moldova follows a policy of constitutional neutrality, and so it is not uh, requ requesting or seeking NATO membership. It's not a NATO aspirant, um, but it is a strong partner to NATO. And NATO has uh, tailored its support uh, for Moldova to be uh, fully in respect of its uh, policy of constitutional neutrality. And NATO does recognize Moldova as one of its partners, and call, uh, particularly at risk, and has targeted its support. To support Understood. It. Uh, it is common knowledge that the majority of NATO members still fail to meet uh, the alliance's 2 percent of GDP threshold for defense spending. Uh, but this past February, Secretary Austin met with NATO Secretary General uh, Stoltenberg uh, and then announced that NATO countries would agree to a quote-unquote new defense investment pledge at the Vilnius summit. Uh, Ms. Cooper, uh, do you know what this new pledge would look like and what uh, it would it be in increased threshold? Congressman, I'm going to defer to um, Das Jones since my primary responsibility is not specific to NATO. So allies are intensely negotiating what uh, the new uh, updated defense investment pledge uh, will be. Um, and. Um, our position is that um, the new defense investment pledge needs to um, affirm an enduring commitment to, send, to spend 2 percent of GDP as a floor um, for, for all allies. But in addition to that, there needs to be strong language um, 
to spend to aim to spend even beyond that because in our assessment two percent spending by by each ally would actually not be sufficient is there going to be accountability measures as part of this uh, so the Secretary General does release a report um, annually uh, that details defense spending by by all allies and all allies um, are uh, uh, asked to produce a plan, a credible plan for how they will get to the 2% mark. Thank you.